<laughs> Good morning, extraordinary women. I hope you're all very well on this Sunday morning. Let me just press that screen so my face doesn't look quite as strange as it was doing so good morning everybody i wanted to hop on live this morning because i've got something that's spinning around my head so i might do my skincare while i'm talking about this i'm just because i'm in this room it makes sense to do my skincare right but i want to so first of all let me just kind of just reiterate um the purpose of this group so um we've had some new members come in recently so i need to just i just want to touch on that so this group is my evolution, it's my journey, it's my kind of um, path to reclaiming my power and I really share a lot of my thoughts, a lot of my feelings, a lot of my everything that kind of goes on for me here in the hope that I can shine that light for you. So I talk about this quite a lot but my, I believe my, my kind of purpose if you want in this group is to, to shine a light so that you kind of have a light bulb moment and you find your path too, to reclaiming your power. I don't believe that there is one set way of doing this. I actually don't believe that there's one set kind of power, if you want to put it that way, right? We work out our power based on what really vibes with us. It's all about our own internal energy and our own internal feelings. And if you are someone who joined this group back in the day when it was a makeup tip group, then wow, you are just going to be kind of like going, what on earth is going on here? But one day there will be a live that will vibe with you and you will go, oh my God. And you will kind of have that moment that I had when someone first started started this path for me, when someone first started me on this journey, right? Because this journey for me has been absolutely incredible. And if you've been watching, if you've been following, and you've been watching my evolution, good morning, Andrea. If you've been watching my evolution and watching how I've gone from where I was 18 months ago to who I am right now, and you want a piece of this, then you want to be taking all you can from these lives. And I totally 100% trust that if you are watching this live right now, Andrea, <laughs> um, if you are watching this live right now, you are meant to hear it, okay? I also totally trust that if you catch up on this at some point later on, if this pops into your feed, you were meant to hear this, okay? So tune in, tune in guys, right, okay, so. I've been going through a little bit of a kind of argument with myself for the last kind of, God, I don't even know how long for actually guys, a long time, right? Um, where I kind of try to manage my time. I kind of try to get myself organized. I kind of try to, to kind of, you know, really kind of force myself into that kind of construct of time, okay? Yes, you see where we're going, don't you, with those words that I just used, okay? So, for example, the last two weeks, okay, I have scheduled a 12.30 live in here every Wednesday, okay? And I've also scheduled other lives in other groups that I am part of. So, in my tribe, or our tribe, it's our tribe, in our tribe, I scheduled a live for 7.30 on Monday morning. In the You Are Extraordinary group, I set a scheduled a live for Thursday evening, Okay, so I've scheduled these lives. I've also got the, the She Is Empowered Masterclass that's still running. We're on the last, oh, it's the last week today. Oh, oh my God. I'm so excited to just kind of see these women just kind of like spread their wings, feel empowered and really kind of just tune into that. But, so it's the last one of those. And again, I've scheduled that time. Now, I found it really hard this last week to keep up with that. The first week that I did it, I was like, yes, this is working, this is amazing. But then this last week, I found it really hard. And as the week moves on through the days and I get towards the end of the week, I find it really hard too to stick to it, okay? So when I'm scheduling lives on a Sunday or a Monday, I'm like, yeah, I can keep to these. But as the week goes along, I kind of fade and I'm like, ah, oh, I can't keep to these, right? So I'm having this little inner battle with myself about time and managing time okay so I decided this morning I was going to have a look into that I was going to have a bit of a kind of like a little bit of a dig deep into that a little bit of a you know working out what I feel about that and that's what's generated this life so let's just think about time okay as a construct okay so time got, my, got all my notes got all my notes right so time this is what I was journaling on and researching this morning 
So time as we know it right now, okay, 24 hours in a day, um, 60 minutes in an hour, um, 60 seconds in an hour, tenths of seconds, notice that, right? Time as we think of it, this is a quote that I got from, from, um, from that there Google, okay? Time as we think of it isn't innate to our natural world. It's a man-made construct to describe, monitor and control industry and industry production, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do on this live, so I'm just going to leave it there for a second while I explain to you what I'm going to do on this live and what I'm going to talk through so that you can decide whether this is for you or not because if it's not for you, you know, there's no point kind of hanging around, right? So, when... What am I even talking about? I've lost my track of thought. <laughs> does happen, doesn't it? So let me read this again. Time as we think of it isn't innate to our natural world. It's a man-made construct to describe, monitor and control industry and industry production. So what I'm going to go through on this live, I'm going to talk through thoughts, feelings, research around time as a construct, where it came from, how it evolved, to get to the point where we are today, okay? So the point of this is, is to give you a different perception on the life that we're living, okay? So this is to give you a little, shine a light on where you are finding the same struggles as me. So where you're finding that you're trying to manage time and it's all stressful and you're putting things in here and you're doing that then and you're doing that then and you're managing all that time, right? When life and the natural world is a life of ease and flow. So I'm gonna talk about the background behind that, the research I've done on that, but I'm also then gonna talk about like how to how to kind of like bring that into your world. So how to bring elements of this into your world to make your life easier and happier. Because I believe right now, when I'm talking about reclaiming your power, right? The person I am now compared to the person I was 18 months ago, right? I am much happier, I'm much more at peace, I am much, uh, I just can't even, the joy that is in my life every day at the moment, and it's because of this evolution, this journey I've gone on, and I look around society now, knowing the journey that I've been on, looking back and being able to connect the dots, and I see a, a kind of a world, a society that to me feels full of angst, because most people are caught up where I was 18 months ago. Most people are tied into this, this society life. And I'm not saying that's wrong, guys. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying we have an, uh, lots of other elements to us than this surface layer that we're all trying to live in right now, okay? And I think, I honestly believe that that, the way that we are living life right now is creating so much kind of... Um, negative feelings within our bodies and so much kind of contorting and moving and pushing us away from who we are really meant to be deep down in our soul that we are actually starting to feel. We're actually really seeing the impact on that, on the way that we live in our lives. We're numbing ourselves with social media. We're numbing ourselves with the TV. We're numbing ourselves with food, with alcohol. We're just numbing these feelings because we think our feelings are wrong. When our feelings are our absolute guidance, right? And like I say, I know some of you will be watching this going, oh my God, where has she gone? Where's the Gale we used to know and love because this one's flipping loopy. But trust me guys, right? The difference in the way that you, way that you feel inside, in your deep down soul is, it just, I can't explain it. And if you are living a life where you are feeling that, underlying current of negativity, that underlying current of self-doubt, that underlying current of never feeling good enough, never matching up, never really kind of getting to that kind of point of happiness because it's always out of reach, it's always further away. If you are living that kind of life, then start to listen to some of these lives. Start to see how you can vibe with these principles, how these principles, these this paradigm shift, which is a shift in the way that you see things, let me shine that light for you, okay? Right, okay, so fun fact for you, right? Fun fact, Facebook has actually invented its own version of time. Now, I'm not saying it has to, it, it, it kind of forces its employees to follow that time as in the construct of their day. However, they have invented their own um, their own time system, 
okay and it's all to do with how many images can come up on your on your phone okay how many images can be shown in a in a, a certain amount of time right they call it the flick okay and it's longer than a nano set second but shorter than a second okay so that really does kind of highlight the fact that actually time over the years has been created and invented by different societies different civilizations different you know um periods of time periods of history um to to really reflect what they want it to be right so facebook want a measure that measures the amount of images that can come on your screen at any one time and so they've created this measure that works for them right so do you see where i'm going with that does does that kind of like you know, we can all create a measure of time that works for us to measure what we want to measure, to track what we want to track, right? We can all create that, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, we have to live within the constructs of our current um, agreed time for our planet, i.e. the 24 hours in a day, the days of the week, the, the days of the year, blah, 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 right? Okay, however, scientifically, guys, we have something called a leap year, okay? And the leap year is when the year is longer than we believe it should be, okay? So we have this thing of 365 days in a year. However, every now and again, there's an extra day. So we've we've created something called the leap year to allow for that, right? Now, interestingly enough, in science, the same thing happens in minutes, okay? So not every minute is 60 seconds, okay? Sometimes a minute is 63 seconds. Sometimes it's 52 seconds. Well, no, maybe not that far, but 58 seconds. OK, so we are creating this structure for us to live by so that we can um, track industry so that we can communicate with the world so that we're not all on different timescales. So Greenwich Mean Time, right, which is what we all live to, was actually designed because right, there was a we we ran laws. We created laws in England based on the solar kind of time the solar cycle okay and what it meant was that it was really hard for policemen to enforce it because we didn't have a total structure right so and it all comes down to alcohol which is really interesting right so um in the pubs okay you were only allowed to serve alcohol up until a certain time you weren't allowed to serve it in, until a certain time now all over england we've got the north of england the south of england the 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 sun rising does change slightly right there's the solar the day the hours of daytime changes slightly so they couldn't actually balance it out okay so that's where greenwich mean time came from we've now got a mean time an average time that we all follow across across the uk okay interesting interesting right okay so Historically, right, medieval times, people were paid by the day, not by the hour, okay? So what that meant is they would roll with the daytime. So you would maybe get into, get up when the sun rose, you would go into work, you would do whatever it was, gonna, what, it, what you were meant to be doing, plowing the fields, whatever it was, okay? And then when it started to get dark, you would come home, okay? And you were paid by the day, okay? Um... And obviously that changed with the seasons. So as we moved into summer, you would work longer. As we moved into the winter, you would work shorter days. You were paid by the day, okay? Now, the Industrial Revolution came around, okay? And we got better at mechanics and better at technology. I'm having to follow my notes. It's not totally in there because I've only researched it this morning, okay? So we got better at mechanics, better at technology, okay? We wanted... Um, like better production we wanted more effective produ production so clocks got more accurate T telling the time became more accurate um we started to kind of create like mechanical clocks not just clocks with a pendulum right so employers began to be able to track attendance and that's when per hour wages came about um so you were paid by the hour that you gave right employers then were able to actually track your effectiveness within that hour too because it might be that you needed to plow a third of a field in that hour whatever right so this all built up okay around industry around companies around you know building that kind of vibe in the world right now obviously as time became 
as time moved on, we started communicating with people at different parts of the world. So we started reaching out to people in America, you know, I don't know, Captain Cook, I don't know, all that kind of jazz. I don't know my historical lives. I did not do history at school, I did geography. <laughs> but, so we then needed to start communicating with people on the other side of the world. So we needed to understand what time zone they were in, okay? So the, hence, this is where we all are now, right? I, I, in my day job, I deal with people in lots of different areas of the world. I deal with people in France, Germany, America. I deal with people down in um, Australia and kind of like um, Thailand and places like that, that kind of the Eastern cultures. I deal with people all over the world. I need to know what time it is when I'm booking meetings and things in those areas of the world so that I can make sure that the people are around to communicate with me, right? So this is where we've kind of ended up. So interestingly enough, right, the Egyptians brought around this, this idea of 24 hours in a day, okay? And then during the French Revolution, that's where, I, I find this really interesting because our clock, the way that we tell time is a total hodgepodge of different cultures over the years. But the really interesting one to me is that everything is in 60s, okay? So when you start hours, it's 60 minutes to an hour, it's 60 seconds to a minute. But if you go into seconds, you have tenths of seconds, not 60s of seconds. Really interesting. That's from the French Revolution, that part, okay? Right, okay. So I've talked about that. So the ideas behind time in different cultures and stuff really changes. So in Christianity and the world that we live in now, it's very linear, okay? You see it as that's where time started and then it moves on, okay? And we're on that line. We're, we're walking forwards on that line, okay? In ancient times, it was a wheel. It was thought of as a wheel. So it was the wheel of life. It was the wheel of the day, the wheel of the month, the wheel of the year, okay? And there was a belief that you came back around, Okay, so that's where the ideas of like maybe past lives and stuff came from because we come back around, okay? We're on that wheel as much as the day is on that wheel, okay? Interesting, right? And then if you go as far as into the Kabbalah, okay, the Kabbalah believes that time is a total illusion and that we are living on this planet or we are living in the same time as our past, in the same time as our future, yeah, right? Okay, right, okay, so there you go offloaded all the research I've done this morning. Okay, so where does this bring me to? Okay, well, it brings me to a point of how do I link my energetics to this? Where do we go with this? How do we bring it into life? What, what can we do about this? How can, well, I'm saying we, but this is me. This is me trying to work out how to make my life feel good every single day. And when I come against a niggle, I go back and I kind of go, oh, how can I resolve this niggle? Okay, how can I resolve this thing that didn't feel good, this thing that didn't work for me? Okay, so I think we need to have an awareness, an awareness that time is just a construct. Okay, it's it's not. It's not some. It's it's not actually our natural way of being guided. Okay, our natural way of being guided deep down. Okay. Let's take off all these layers. Let's go right down into our soul. Our soul follows the natural cycle of our world, okay? It follows the sun, it follows the moon, it follows the daylight, yeah? So how do, so what we are in effect doing by putting this time construct on there, okay, is we're not allowing our lives to flow, okay? So just because I set a, a block of time and I say, right ladies, I am gonna be in here on a Wednesday at 12.30 and I'm gonna bring you something really interesting. I'm gonna share something that's really interesting, okay? Just because I've set that block of time at that time does not mean my energy is in that moment, okay? So how many times have you decided you're gonna to go to the gym at that time and then you get there and you're like, oh, I don't feel like doing this now. It's because you're following the time, not following your feeling, okay? There are other times where you would have been in the perfect mode for being in the gym, but you didn't schedule the gym for that time. So do you see how I mean? It, it's about getting this balance between your energy, who you are, how your soul is flowing through the natural cycle of life and merging it with this man-made, this, this human um, construct of time, okay? Oh, I'm a bit, oh, ah, this morning. Anyway, so. So I think what we need to do is we need to have an awareness, okay? So have an awareness that 
just because you set that time, just because you schedule that time, does not necessarily mean you will be in that energy to deliver that thing right there and then, okay? So, there's two ways to deal with that. What you could do is you could set aside half an hour beforehand to generate that energy, to activate the energy that you know you are gonna need. So if you know you are gonna be going in the gym at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning, okay, then set aside half an hour prior to that to beef yourself up, to activate the energy that you will need to get into the gym. Don't just turn up at the gym at 10 and just hope for the best. Actually, really, play the music. Go on go on YouTube and Google thing, um, Google. Go on YouTube and search energetic frequencies, energetic, um, in high energy binaural beats. Do stuff that gets your body into the frame of mind of doing, <laughs> gets your body into the frame of mind, gets your body flowing with the energy that it needs to do the thing, okay? Do you see where I'm going with that? Okay, right, so I think we have to also have an understanding that as seasons change, our time doesn't, okay? So I talked a little bit earlier on about how um, back in the day in medieval times that you were paid by the day, not by the hour. And that meant shorter days in winter and longer days in the summer. So think about this, right? So our body clock, our internal rhythm wants to do less in autumn and winter, okay? We're currently going through that transition now. We're going through the transition of summer into winter, right? We're going through autumn, okay? Um, and we, what we will see happen is we will see the dark nights, the time that the, it gets dark change, okay? We'll be driving home from work at five o'clock in darkness, okay? When our body wants to sleep, okay? Our body wants to slow down, our body wants to sleep, okay? So what I'm trying to say with that is be aware of that inner, inner cycle as well as your structure, okay? Your daily structure because allow yourself to do less. You are going to be bound by this. You've got to look at where you are bound by this nine to five, where you have to be in the construct of time. OK, so your nine to five or, you know, when you've made plans with other people, you know, the, the nine to five, the, the, the time that we have allows us all to interact really well together. That's the point of it. Right. Society, we all need to interact. Right. So time allows us to all interact at the right time you know if you are going to i'm talking about the gym quite a lot if you're going to an aerobics class you need to know that you're going to be there when the teacher's going to be there right if you go to the bed at the same time as your your partner you need to both know what time you're going to bed right so i'm just trying to put it into the kind of life okay if you you know if you have breakfast with your partner you need to every single day around your working day you both need to know what time you need to be there and you both need to know what time it is to know when to get there right okay so we are bound by this construct for pulling together as society for interacting as society for connecting okay but we also need to be aware on the outside of that that we have this inner cycle okay so for me where i'm going with this is i need to be aware of where I am bound by that that structure, okay? So that is my working day, it's my Monday to Friday. It's things that I do out, you know, outside of that. So do I need to be here at this time? Do I need to be here at this time? And I think, honestly, I honestly think it's a case of looking at what where you have space around that and actually tuning into your inner cycle around that. So for example, how many of us, as we come up to Christmas, put more stuff into our diaries we need to go shopping there we need to do this here we need to go celebrate that there we need to have time with them we need to have a f celebration with them we need to do this we need to do that we're going to do all this stuff and we put more and more time into our diaries at the time when actually we have the shortest day and we need the most sleep do you see how it kind of it kind of gels together if you want it to gel together. So for me, what I've made a decision of, <laughs> where we're getting to with this, is that my day is very structured. I work nine to, well, nine to five-ish. I have certain blocks in my day where I have to be places at certain times, okay? But around that, I can do what I want with the time that's left. So in the winter, what in the autumn winter what i'm going to do is i'm going to start making sure that i've got more time for rest okay because that's what our body needs 
okay? Then I'll, I'll come out of my hibernation in spring. <laughs> I'll come out of my hibernation, I'll do more in spring, okay? I'll be outside more, I'll do that kind of thing more. Morning, Louise, morning, morning. So this is just to kind of throw that out there as much as I can. I think the key is making this, making the structure of time, the, the time what you are bound by, I think you need to just kind of like make that a part of life and then the bits where you don't need to be in that you need to tune in to your natural rhythm and your feelings okay we have this thing where we have to have eight hours sleep a night okay that's not for everybody and we all know that but tune into you because I bet my bottom dollar as you start moving into these kind of like darker days darker nights into this next season you will start to need more sleep so if you are someone who needs eight hours of sleep in the summer the chances are you might need 10 hours of sleep as you move into this into this these darker days okay and what I'm trying to say is I think it isn't about being one or the other for me it's about having a balance of the two okay I look at Matt's dad now, Matt's dad's um, 85, okay, and he's literally started going to bed at half four in the afternoon, and Matt's mum's like, oh, I'm so lonely on a night, why is he going to bed at this time, why is he doing that? But what I see in that is I see someone who, you know, he's 85, his body's beginning to get older and all that kind of jazz, but what I see in that is I see someone who is following his feelings, okay, he's, he knows he's tired, he knows he needs more sleep. He doesn't need someone to tell him when to go to bed. He gets up and he goes to bed when he's tired. Think of animals, right? You don't need to put your dog to bed. Your dog will settle down and go to sleep when it feels it needs to. Your cat will settle down and go to sleep when it needs to, okay? So what I'm trying to get to here, I think, is instead of allowing your life to be completely run by time blocking and managing your 24 hours in your day and making sure you get this scheduled amount of this, this scheduled amount of this, what I'm trying to say is, follow it where you have to, but then tune into your feelings all of, all of the other times. Does that make sense? What do I feel I need for the next hour? And yes, we have to, you know, if I said to Matt, because I, I reckon I could sleep, I reckon I would probably sleep every single moment of the day if um, I, I literally just tuned in. <laughs> I think I would probably sleep. <laughs> but what I mean by that is we do have to be aware of those others you know it is it isn't just about us but be aware of our energy as well okay if you need to spend time with your husband your partner your children your mum whatever it may be tune in how do I feel today well actually I feel a bit tired I'm a bit kind of I want like that quiet thing we'll do something quiet don't go don't go to the aerobics class don't go to the um the, the loud noisy bar tune in you've got an internal guidance system you just need to follow it okay and trust me when you start to do that what happens is at the moment or the way I see it at the moment is we have a soul path okay this is our inner guidance our inner being you know the person that we're meant to be the person that we truly are and what's happened with with us in society is we've kind of gone <gasps> This path's so wrong, it doesn't fit with everything that's going on. So I'm gonna go off that path. I'm gonna go that way. I'm gonna go do it this way, right? And so you go off and you do it this way, but you're moving further and further and further away from your actual path, which I believe is creating this angst, this underlying kind of feeling of not being good enough, not being worthy, never matching up to life, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, right? So the closer we can come back to that path, even if it's just a little notch, right? I think we'll ease a little bit of this self-doubt, self-worth problem, all that kind of stuff. Andrea, listen to yourself. I know, that's what I do. I'm a self-projected projector. So this, this is the moment where I kind of I'm realizing it I'm, I'm talking to you guys but what I'm t what I'm doing is while I'm self projecting while I'm projecting all my thoughts and everything what that does is that puts them in an order for me and that makes me make sense of them okay this is how I then make decisions so this is my process so I am in effect making a decision right now to change the way that I'm living I'm making a decision to change the way that I follow the structure of time that has been created for an industrial world, not for a um, 
it's, it's been created for a world of doing, not for a world of being. So this is my moment where I'm kind of coming to terms with that. I've done the research, I felt the need to talk it out. I've come on here, I'm talking it out. Okay, that's my human design, self-projected projector. Um, so, so yeah, so that's me guys. That's where I'm at. You know, I'm going to start tuning into this a bit more. I've already kind of stepped away from a lot of constructs that we have around kind of time and stuff. For example, I eat when I'm hungry. I don't eat when it's breakfast time. I don't eat when it's dinner time. I don't eat when it's tea time. I eat when I'm hungry. Um, and I'm tuning into that from an intuitive perspective. So from going from that point, I can now see, you know, every time you step, step a little bit further into something and you learn something more, it opens loads of doors for other areas. And so this is opening the doors for, you know, the next step, I suppose. All right, let's see if anyone has any questions. Pop your questions below. Um, you know, I, I, I've had a few people dipping in and out, which is totally fine. You know, like I say, this, this live, these free flows, they're not for everybody. They're for me. <laughs> they're for me. And if you get something from this, if I shine a light for you, then that is all I need to do, right? Okay, so let's have a look. I love this. I write mine down and it makes more sense to me when I'm making my decisions. Yes, yes. And it will do because writing is really it digs into your subconscious when you write it takes you past your conscious mind so it takes you into your conscious it's subconscious and that will take you into your feelings louise so you will tune into those feelings which we've talked about for your human design so that's brilliant because that will help you to lead because when you write things um in the same way as when you speak things it creates a feeling um and that's that's it's the feel, it's the energy, it's the feeling that you need to follow. Does that make sense? So I hope this has really helped everybody. Um, I recently talked about this with one of my friends, and I think this is where it's kind of triggered from. Um, I recently talked about it with one of the girls in the tribe, and she was she was scheduling time to do a specific thing at a specific time, and she's a very flowy person. And I was like, nah, I don't think scheduling your time is like that is going to work for you. And so what she did is she lent into it a little bit. And instead of having that scheduled time where sometimes she would kind of get there and she'd be like, uh, I'm blank, I can't do this right now. What she did is she started to lean into it and she started to go, right, okay, when do I feel like doing this? And then when she did it that way, the brain was flowing, the energy was there, the passion was there. And so, you know, it does work. And the only thing that I can suggest is that, you know, we, ha we are kind of pulled into this construct of time. So the only thing that I would suggest that you do is create little rituals. Like, like I said, you know, if you're scheduled to go to the gym at 10 and, and at half nine, you're like, oh my God, this is really not what I feel like I want to be doing. I feel like I want to be quiet. I feel like a you can manipulate your energy. You can change your energy. So all you have to do is learn a little ritual that will change your energy. So while it's following your energy, when you have to, you can also change your energy. Does that make sense? Right, guys, I'm going to go um, because my tummy's rumbling. My tummy's telling me it's time to go and eat some breakfast. And I also know I'm getting subliminal messages from downstairs from my husband going, I'm hungry. How long are you going to be? I just know he is. I just know he is. <laughs> So I'm going to go down and have breakfast with Matthew now and I just hope that this really kind of, I don't know, just shines a light, just shines a light, helps you to kind of change your life a little bit and move a little bit closer to that soul path. The real people that we are deep down inside as humans, when you start digging to, into this guys and you start to really tune in to who we really are as humans, okay, history wasn't, history, the, the ancient times, the history, right? It, it tells us truths about who we are deep down inside. And I, there is so much more to us than what we see right now. So much more. And when you dig into it, it really does start to open your mind and bring you back. Bring you back to reclaiming your power and to becoming who you were meant to be. Becoming the extraordinary version of you. Becoming extraordinarily you. Oh, I love how I get it all to link. <laughs> <laughs> right have a great sunday guys if you are in she is empowered i will see you around two o'clock um for our final session which is really exciting um and then, then you are free to be empowered throughout the world <laughs> catch you later